Dear pupils, parents and guardians, let me start by thanking you for being a part of all our remote learning platforms, particularly our television program, The Classroom in Your Home. Each feedback has been awesome. Good job you. Our teachers have been working assiduously to break the learning laws during this critical period. Therefore, I am pleased to inform you that the classroom in your home has been extended to accommodate the lower primary classes and a dedicated lesson to cater for our special needs pupils in line with our mandate of providing an all-inclusive and quality basic education in our dear state. This program is fully sponsored by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEG, and supported by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board under the COVID-19 Blended Learning Intervention Initiative. Please encourage your wards to tune in and take every advantage of this laudable program. Also remember, this pandemic is not over. Let us continue to abide by all health and safety guidelines as stipulated by the government. At last we we are determined to leave no child behind in our quest to improve the standard of basic education in our state. Thank you. Hello, pupils. You're welcome to another wonderful edition of your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home, a program sponsored by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, and packaged by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, LASUBEB. It is to ensure that you are academically engaged whether you are in school or not. I am Antifumi, your English studies teacher, and I have with me your wonderful teachers, the mathematician, Uncle Agbaje. Hello, children. That's your mathematics teacher, and your popular teacher, Uncle Popo. Hello, puppies. He will be taking you through all the subjects on the general studies. And of course, we have our sign language interpreter, Uncle Wale. Together, we, we are, are bringing, bringing the, the classroom, classroom into your home. Please stay tuned. lesson today we will continue with adverbs yes adverbs part two you remember that we started with adverbs and we mentioned the types of adverbs and we identified them in sentences today we will continue with the second part of adverbs but before we go into the lesson proper let's have the correction to the homework you were asked to pick out the adverbs in the sentences. Atifumi got six out of six. What about you? Five? Four? You missed just one? Don't worry. You are amazing. And I need to celebrate you with a chair. Well done. Now to the learning objective for today. Don't forget, I told you that we're going to look at adverbs. We'll continue with adverbs. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to differentiate adverbs from adjectives in sentences. Not only that, you should be able to compare adverbs correctly. Are we ready? Are we ready to differentiate adverbs from adjectives in sentences? And are we ready to compare adverbs correctly? Then let's start. Adverbs and adjectives. Adverbs and adjectives. Some adverbs have the same form as adjectives. They are similar to adjectives. Thus, the words serve as adverbs or adjectives depending on what they do in sentences. There are some words that can serve as adverbs or adjectives depending on what they do in sentences. Examples of such words are hard, fast, early, late, little or a little, 
much, far, deep, high, clean, close, sharp, low, and cheap. These are examples of words that serve as adverbs or adjectives depending on what they do in sentences. If the words answer the question how, when, where, or why, they are adverbs. But if they merely describe the nouns or answer the question what is it like, then they are adjectives. Are you able to note that? If the words answer questions why, how, when, and where, they are adverbs. Note that. But if, they if the words describe nouns, or merely, if it describe nouns, or answer the question, what is it like, then the, the words are adjectives. Let's move on. These are examples. Look at this word. D-E-E-P, deep. Deep. Look at the sentence. The boy drowned in the deep river. The boy drowned in the deep river. Because deep here is talking about, or is uh, explaining the kind of river, it is an adjective. Look at this one. He looked deep into her face. He looked deep into her face. This is an adverb. Deep here is an adverb. Don't forget you said it depends on what they do in sentences. In the first sentence, the deep qualifies the river. It makes us know the type of river we're talking about. That makes it an adjective. But in the second sentence, he looked deep into her face. How did it look into her face? That means it answers the question, how? That makes it an adverb. I believe you're getting me. You understand what I just said now? Well done. Let's compare adverbs now. Don't forget in our learning objective, we said we should be able to compare adverbs correctly. Now we are at that point of comparing adverbs. Like adjectives, adverbs have three degrees. I believe you remember that in our adjective lesson. Adverbs also have three degrees in terms of comparison, namely, the positive, the comparative, and the superlative, just like we did when we were comparing adjectives. Look at these examples. Fast, faster, fastest. Fast, faster, fastest. Fast is talking about, when you're talking about just one person, one idea. Faster, when you are now comparing between two, you are comp it is at the comparative degree. That is comparing two things or two persons or two ideas. You put ER. And then at the superlative, when you are comparing more than two things, you have the superlative stage. And that is what makes it fastest. Fast, faster, fastest. The ER and EST are added to the positive degree to give comparative and superlative degrees. I believe you, you could recall that. Good job, you. Let's have other examples. And we're going to read together. Are we ready? Go. High, higher, highest. Sharp, sharper, sharpest. Cheap, cheaper, cheapest. However, others take more and most in the comparative and superlative, and the bulk of adverbs belong to this group. They are adverbs which usually end in L-Y. Remember in our last lesson we talked about most adverbs ending in L-Y. These are examples. Happily. We cannot say happily, happily, yes. No, it is incorrect. So it takes, happily takes the comparative and the superlative form by saying, by adding more and most. Happily, more happily, most happily. Quietly, quietly, more quietly, most quietly. 
I believe you're following the lesson. Adverbs and their position in a sentence. Adverbs and their position in a sentence. We're talking about the way we place adverbs in sentences. Wrong placement of adverbs can cause misunderstanding. When adverbs are not placed correctly, it can give the sentence a, 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 a different meaning. It can cause misunderstanding. This is so because certain adverbs can only be placed at specific points in a sentence to make it sensible. Certain adverbs can only be placed at specific points. If you don't place them at that specific point, there will be misunderstanding. So to make your sentence sensible, you must place the adverbs at the correct point. Here are some rules governing the placing of adverbs in sentences. You want to place your adverbs correctly in sentences? These are the rules to, to follow. Number one, adverbs of manner and place are usually placed immediately after the verb within the sentence or clause. Adverbs of manner or place, where do you place them? Immediately after the verb within the sentence or clause. Example, she left hungrily. She left hungrily. That is adverb of manner. The lady went nowhere. The lady went nowhere. That is adverb of what? Of place. Good. Adverbs of time are placed immediately after the verb they qualify or at the beginning of a sentence. Ad adverbs of time, you place them where? Immediately after the verb they qualify or at the beginning of a sentence. Look, look at these examples. The work must be done today. The work must be done when? Today. Today, the work must be done. So the first sentence was placed last, at the end of the, of the verb it qualifies, and in the, at the second sentence, the second sentence we have it, we have the hard wrap coming first. Today, the work must be done. Adverbs of number are usually placed at the end of the sentence. Adverbs of number are usually placed at the end of the sentence. Example, they clapped once. I was flogged twice. That's adverbs of numbers. We place them at the end of the sentence. Adverbs of degree. Adverbs of degree. For example, quite, very, rather, just, too, fairly. We mentioned all of them in the previous lesson. How do we use them? We place them before the word they are modifying. We place them before the word they are modifying. It is evaluation time. We've been able to compare adverbs and we've been able to talk about the positioning of adverbs in sentences. So it is evaluation time. I want to test how attentive you have been in the course of the lesson. You have to pick out the adverbs in the sentences. Please pick out the adverbs in these sentences. You have one minute to do that and your time starts now. on me. You've been able to identify the, the adverbs in the sentences. Let's see, let's check how attentive you've been. Mrs. Adeoroju works hard. 
What is the adverb there? Had. Yes, had. That is the adverb there. Number two, the sun is shining brightly. What is the adverb? Brightly. Good job, you. The three girls wept bitterly. Of course, the adverb is bitterly. He arrived yesterday. Adverb of, of time. Yes, good. That is, the adverb then is yesterday. I sat down there. The adverb is there. And the last one, the children are running fast. Yes, you all crossed it. The adverb is fast. Good job, you. You are amazing children. That's why Auntie Fumi is always proud of you. You have six out of six, or five, or four, or even three. I am proud of you all the same. Let me celebrate you with a cheer. <laughs> now, this is our homework. You know, Auntie Fumi loves pupils that do their homework. You are to make each of these adverbs, turn them to adverbs. Quick, fast, hungry, successful, deep, bad, happy. Just turn them to adverbs. It is very easy. I trust you. That's it for today. We have come to the end of the English studies lesson for today. I believe that you had fun learning hard verbs. I did too. It's time to hand you over to the mathematician on Kwagbaje for the mathematics lesson. But don't forget, Auntie Fumi is always proud of you. Well done. Hello children. You're welcome to this segment of the program, The Classroom in Your Home. It is mathematics time, and that means it is time to have some fun. I am Uncle Agbaje. Today in mathematics, well, we are moving on to something new. But before I open the floor for that topic, let's check the correction to the previous assignment. You were taught in the last lesson how to increase and decrease quantities by given ratios. This one says we should decrease the speed 112 km per hour in the ratio 6 to 7. And that means that we have to put the smaller number on top when we're changing this ratio to fraction because we're decreasing. Okay, so the slower speed will be 6 sevenths of the faster speed. So we have 6 over 7 of 112 km per hour, which of course will be written as 6 over 7 times 112 km per hour. And now dividing through 7 goes here 1, 7 goes here 1, remaining 4, and then in 42, 7 goes 6 times. Then we multiply 6 by 16, and we get 96 kilometers per hour. I'm sure that that is what you got. Then, good job you. I'll celebrate you with a chair. <laughs> now, to something interesting. I want you to th think about this uh, statement. Assume that three books cost 45 Nero. You want to buy three books, and they say the cost is 45 Nero. Now, if you need to buy more books of the same type, so the prices will be the same, do you need to pay more for the books or less? Three books sold for 45 Nero. If you need to buy more than three books, are you going to pay more money or are you going to pay less money? Did I hear you say you're going to pay more money? Of course you're correct. If you need to buy more books, we will pay more money. The more books we are buying, the more money we have to pay. And also, if we have to buy, you know, less than three books, then we have to pay less than 45 Nera. The more books, the more money. The less books, the less money we have to pay. Okay. Now, this kind of relationships, uh, relationship between the books and the money is what we call the direct relationship. I mean... They are moving in the same direction at all times, right? If the one quantity increases, then the other quantity increases. In this case, we are talking about the books and the money. The money increases, the number of books you are going to get will increase. And then the money decreases, the number of books you can get for that amount also decreases. We call this the direct relationship, okay? As one quantity increases, the other increases. As one quantity decreases, the other decreases. As you can see in this arrow, one goes up, one goes up, one comes down, 
one comes down. Now I want you to think about this proposition. There is a few to be cultivated and there are six men as you can see. Now these six men can cultivate the field in 10 days. Okay. Now think, if we increase the number of men working on the land, will they need more days to do the same work or they will do the work in less days? I'll take that again. There is a field and six men can cultivate it in 10 days. Now if we had more men to join them, will it take more time to complete the work or less time? Did I hear you say less time? Then you're correct, my friend, because obviously if we have more hands on deck doing the same work, the work will take a fast time. The, the work that's supposed to be done by one person will now be done by more than one person and they will finish on time. So the job will take less time. So in this case, the more men we had to do the job, the more men we put on the land to cultivate it, the less number of days it will take. And the less number of men we put on the land, I mean, if we now reduce the number of men, it's going, it's going to take more than 10 days to finish the job. So if we reduce the men, the number of days needed to finish the job will increase. So the less the amount of workers we have, the more the days to finish the job. And the more the amount of workers we have, the less the days to finish the job. And this is an example of what we call an indirect relationship. When you have two quantities, as one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. So if one quantity increases, the other decreases. And if one decreases, the other will not decrease, it will increase. Okay, so we have talked about two things now. Direct relationships, they go up at the same time, come down at the same time. Indirect, one goes up and one comes down. And this is exactly what we want to treat today. This is an aspect of mathematics called relationships or proportion. We take the first part of it today. So what are our learning objectives? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate direct relationships from indirect relationships. You should also be able to use equations to in interpret direct relationship problems. And finally, you should be able to, of course, solve problems. That's the essence of mathematics. We must solve real life problems. Solve direct proportion problems using your knowledge that you would have acquired. Now, let's begin with this activity. Study the following scenarios and indicate the type of relationship. You're going to tell me, is it direct relationship or indirect relationship? I'll give you just 20 seconds to do that. Study the statements. 12 boxes of soap weigh 60 kilograms. If we increase the number of boxes, will the mass increase? Four taps fill a tank in 12 minutes. If we now increase the number of taps to fill the tank, will it take more time or less time? Eight girls have enough food for six days. Is that a direct relationship or indirect relationship? A car needs one liter of petrol to travel for... 10 kilometers for 10 kilometers. Now, if we had more petrol, petrol, will it now go for more kilometers or for less kilometers? You have 20 seconds. Indicate whether it's direct or indirect. Begin. Alright then, I believe you're done now. Let's see. 12 boxes of soap weigh 60 kilograms. So obviously, if we have more boxes, the mass will be more. Okay, so that's direct. The more the boxes, the more the mass. If we have four taps filling a tank in 12 minutes, and we, then we increase the number of taps, of course, they will fill the tank faster, which means less time. That's inverse relationship. Eight girls have enough food for six days. Okay, just enough food for six days. Now, if we now share that food, well, for maybe 15 girls. If we increase the number of girls, it will not last them for six days anymore. It will take them um, uh, less days to finish up the food. Okay, now a car needs one liter of petrol to travel for 10 kilometers. If it has two liters to go for more than 10, it will go for 10 kilometers in two places. So the more the amount of petrol you have, the more kilometers the car can travel. And that is a direct relationship. Now, in solving problems, you need to be able to determine Am I dealing with a direct relationship problem here or an indirect relationship problem? So let's consider this problem. The cost of five pairs of shorts is 1,340 Naira. Find the cost of eight pairs. Now we know that the cost of five pairs is 1,340 Naira. If we increase the 
number of shots to eight pairs, obviously we have to pay more, and that is a direct relationship problem. So what will be the cost of eight pairs of shots? Well, we know that five pairs of shots cost 1,340 naira. That's for five. But if we know the price of one, it will be easy for us to calculate the price of eight because we will just multiply it by eight. But we don't know the price of one. So the smart thing to do is to first find the price of one. And so if this is the cost of five pairs, then we have to divide this cost into five to know what each pair will cost. And so one pair of shorts will cost 1,340 divided by five. So if I do that for you here, okay, let me use this black pair, 1,340 Nera. Now divided by five, five goes here, one, five goes in 13, two times remainder three, five goes in 34, six times remainder four, put the four here, five goes in 40, eight times. And so that means that 1,340 divided by five is actually 268 Naira. Then to find the cost of eight pairs of shorts, all we have to do is multiply 268 Naira. You know, one pair of shorts is now 268 Naira. So to find the cost of eight pairs, just multiply that by eight. So doing that, let's use the white here. So we have 268 times eight. Eight times eight is 64, carry six. Eight times six is 48 plus that six. 48 plus 6 is 54. Now, 8 times 2 is 16 plus 5, that's 21. And so, that should give us 2,144, which is the cost of 8 pairs of shorts. Quite easily done. Okay? I hope you got this right. Because your activity is coming up right about now. Remember, try to find the rate for one and then you use that to find whatever you ask to find and in this case you're asked to find the time it will take for a car to go in five hours if it is moving at a uniform speed of 630 kilometer in seven hours so a car moves at a uniform speed of 630 kilometers in seven hours how long will it go in five hours you have reduced the time will the distance reduce it's up to you. You have one minute. Begin. Alrighty then, I believe that you are done by now, my friend. Let's now check out how this is done. In seven hours, the car will travel for 630 kilometers, and the speed is uniform, which means it is the same throughout. And so, we need to know how long it can go in one hour. And that means that we need to divide 630 kilometers into seven, because that 630 kilometers represents the distance traveled in seven hours. So for each hour, you divide it into seven, and you get 90 because 7 goes in 63 9 times and you put 0. And so now that we know that in one hour the car can go for 90 kilometers in one hour, it will be easy for us to know how long it will go, how far rather it will go in 5 hours because 1 hour 90, 1 hour 90, 90 in 5 places. That is 90 times 5, my friend. And of course, 9 times 5 is 45. Put the 0, you get 450 kilometers. So the car travels 450 kilometers in five hours. 
I'm sure that this is what you got because this is easy peasy for you. Good job, you. Let us now look at another way of solving the same type of problem in which we will not have to find the rate for one quantity before finding the required quantity. We will just go from the quantity that we're given to find the required quantity. I'll show you what I mean by this. This question says that if the cost of 6 meters of cloth is 220 naira, what is the cost of 24 meters? And so what I'm going to do is that the initial quantity that I was given is 24 meters. So that's 24 meters of cloth. Now, and the initial quantity is 6 meters. Now I want to find the amount, the price of 24 meters of cloth. So I see that 6 meters and 24 meters, there is a comparison, there is a ratio. The ratio between them is 6 to 24. So 6 has been increased in the ratio 6 to 24. If 6 meters of cloth has been increased in the ratio 6 to 24, then the price will also be increased because it's a direct relationship. The price will be increased in the ratio 6 to 24. And remember our ratio increase. To increase, we put the bigger number on top and the smaller number below, and you use it to increase whatever you want to increase. So this is what you're supposed to have. The ratios are in 6 to 24, but since you're increasing, 24 goes on top. What you want to in increase now is the price. So you multiply it by that. And so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. 24 meters of cloth will now be 24 over 6 divided by 220. And if I take out my worksheet here to solve that, I see that Twenty four over six times two hundred and twenty naira. So six goes here one, six goes here four. Of course this one will be all over one. Now four times two twenty will give me four times zero is zero, four times two is eight, four times two is eight. So we get eight hundred and eighty naira. As you will see. Therefore, the 24 meters of cloth, cloth rather, will cost 880 naira. So all you have to do with this method, my friend, is to compare the initial quantity and the final quantity using ratio. Then you increase the other quantity you are comparing with the same ratio. Don't forget that when you are increasing with ratios, you put the bigger number on top. You can try this with your assignment, which is coming up right about now. Copy this. A ship sails 400 kilometers in 18 hours. How long will it take to cover 1,600 kilometers at the same rate? A woman bought 60 oranges for 400 naira. How much did she pay for 150 oranges? You have 30 seconds to copy this, but do not go away because today is Tuesday, and you know what we have? Magic Tuesday. Hello children, you're welcome to this segment of the program. It is Magic Tuesday where I show you a lot of tips and tricks in mathematics. Today in Magic Tuesday our trick promises to be interesting. We will learn how to multiply large two digit numbers just under five seconds and that means that you don't need all the multiplication tables uh, that you know. This example says we are to multiply 95 by 98 or 98 by 95 whichever the case may be also we'll just write that out 98 times 5, 95 but we do not know the answer to this so what do we do the first number and the second number we have to subtract them from 100 you know the difference what will make it up to 100 that will be 2 for 98 and 5 for 95 you have you know you need 2 to complete this to make 100 you need 5 to complete this to make 100 and these are the two numbers that you need my friend so 2 times 5 is 10 we need that now 2 plus 5 is 7, so you have to subtract that 7 from 100 and you get 93. I'll take that again. The difference is to get to 100, 2 and 5. So multiply 2 and 5, you get 10. Then add 2 and 5, which is 7, and subtract it from 100, you get 93. And your final answer will be that 93 
and that 10. 9,310, my friend. It's as simple as that. Let's see another one. This example says multiply 92 by 89. These are large two-digit numbers. So again, we write out 92 times 89 and we leave it blank. Then we make 92 up to 100. We have 8 left. 89 up to 100, you have 11 left. So you multiply 8 by 11 and you get 88. Then 8 plus 11 is 19. Remove 19 from 100, you get 81. And so your final answer is, is it 88, 81 or 81, 88? Well, it's going to be 81, 88. And that is 8,188, my friend. This works for all two-digit numbers, mind you. But for it to be effective, they have to be very large numbers that you cannot easily multiply uh, ordinarily. But this method will get you there in five seconds. That's it for today. Till I come your way next time, remain wonderful mathematician. Hello, pupils. You are welcome to General Studies class. I am Uncle Popo. Uncle Popo is here. I am also here. Good. We are here together. 100% attention. 100% attention. attention is what you have promised to give me in today's lesson. Our subject for today is social studies. In our last lesson, we talked about sexually transmitted diseases. There, we talked about HIV AIDS. We talked about uh, gonorrhea, syphilis, and how one can contract HIV AIDS. In today's lesson, we want to look at another interesting topic. And our topic for today is influences of foreign culture on our cultural values. Influences of co foreign culture on our cultural values. Let's look at the learning objectives first. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to mention some foreign cultures that are affecting our cultural values. Two, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of foreign culture on our culture. And uh, three, state and discuss how we can promote our culture. All these we want to achieve in today's lesson. Now, let's look at the meaning of foreign culture. Foreign culture refers to the ways of life of people who are not Nigerians. Any, um, we are talking about the culture brought from another country. It could be from nearby country. So far it's not in Nigeria, it's a foreign culture. Any culture brought from maybe Togo, America, Italy, all those, their lifestyle, their ways of doing things, we refer to it in Nigeria as foreign culture. It includes all aspects of their lives, like music, the kind of music they listen to, food, and eating habits, system of education, religion, and so on. We have different ways through which foreign culture have been brought into our country. Let's look at the food here. Now, you can see from this picture, this is, um, I think some of you can say this, this is a mala and a wedu, you can see it, and this one is pizza. Uh, it's very obvious that this is our own food here, our local food, and this is foreign food. Now, we have some people that will prefer eating pizza. Why we see how some uh, Nigerians that will prefer their local food? Let's look at aspects of foreign cultural influence on our culture and values. Aspect of foreign cultural influence on our culture and values. Now let's talk about religion. Our forefathers then were traditional worshippers. They worshipped um, small gods and the spelling of that god I'm referring to is small letter G-O-D. That's the spelling um, when you want to spell small god. So then they were practicing and worshipping different idols and gods. But now the Arab people came and introduced Islam. Likewise, the Christian missionaries came to Nigeria and introduced Christian religion. Now we have three different types of religion. We have the, the Christians, we have the Muslims, we also have the traditional worshippers. Now, the next one is education. The kind of education we were receiving then was um, informal. And then the kind of the classroom setting we have now with the use of technology to aid our teaching and learning was not so then. Then people were learning under the tree. People were learning in the, in the, in the village um, square. 
like that. But now everything has uh, have changed. Next one is political system. Our political system, then we always have the king and the chiefs. But now we have the president, we have the governor, we have the commissioners, we have the um, local government um, chairman. Because, unlike them, we only had the kings and the chiefs. I'm not saying now that we don't see our, um, um, the, our kings and the chiefs, but everything has changed because we now have the president, we now have the governor. Unlike them, the king only has the authority to give order and um, give command, but now everything has changed, it has been influenced. Next one is music. The kind of music you prefer listening to now are not our own local uh, songs. We have our own local songs that we were singing, but now we have different types of song, hip-hop, R&B, jazz music, then we still have our own local music, so it has been influenced. Next one is F. Then we only believed in um, using of um, the leaves or making concussion, all those kind of drugs are made traditionally. But now we have standard hospitals, we have the use of drugs and medicine that can cure our illness. Unlike them, when anything happened, they attach it to spiritual power or they did not worship certain God, that's why it was happening. And they were losing so many lives. But now, with the introduction of um, um, from outside the countries, we now have different medicine and drugs that can cure our illness. Now, let's look at the advantages of foreign culture. The foreign culture, you know, I told you then, it has brought positive influence, likewise negative. Let's check the positive ones, advantages of foreign culture. One, good healthcare system and practice. Good healthcare system and practice. We can now see the, the standard hospitals now with different um, uh, equipment that can really help to that can really help to make somebody get well and recover from any kind of illness. So good healthcare system and practice is now in place. Is through the influence of foreign culture. Next one is well structured educational system. Most of you, your classrooms are well structured. The kind of techno technology they're using to aid teaching and learning, you cannot be compared to what we had during our forefathers' time. So, well structured educational system is another one. Just like this, on online teaching and learning that we are doing is is an influence of foreign culture. Now, I talked about S system, then good healthcare system. So, this is an example. You can see how this place look, looks. So it's an evidence that our health system have been influenced for better. You can see this kind of uh, environment. Let's look at another one. Um, looking here, talking about West Structure Educational System. In the classroom now, they are using um, laptops. We have computers in some school. You can even see, uh, I think uh, from this picture to, I don't know if you see what I'm seeing, can you see somebody there that is number one in the Lagos State? I know some of you will see it. That's Governor Babajide Olushola Sonwolu. The governor, and here in this picture too, you can see the, the dep Deputy Governor, Dr. Bafemi Amzat, the Commissioner for Education, Mrs. Uh, Adefisayo of Olashade. Likewise, the number one in basic education in Lagos State, that's Honorable. Allah we a king. So all these are the people that are making things up happening in education and influencing it for better. So that is well structured educational system. Now, we are not saying that these foreign cultures are only full of advantages without disadvantages. They are few disadvantages to talk about. Let's look at them. One, the promotion of immorality through the internet, videos, radio, magazines, and so on. We cannot deny the fact that immoral acts, most of the moral um, activities um, that our youths or the elderly ones are displaying, some are gotten from the internet. The use of internet also affected us negatively. Some videos that are not suitable for a child, they have access to it and it has influenced us negatively. Now, let's look at how to promote Nigerian culture. How do we promote our own culture? Nigeria has a rich cultural 
heritage in terms of music, uh, music, uh, dressing, festivals, artifacts, and so on. These are the values and traditions that have been passed on from one generation to another and which make us unique as people. To keep our culture, we must do things that can constantly promote and sustain it. Otherwise, it will go out of existence. Here are some of the things we can do to promote Nigerian culture. The things we can do to promote Nigerian culture. One, using the mass media. Using the what? The mass media. What am I talking about? What is mass media? Mass media refers to a medium of communication which is used to reach information to a large number of people at the same time. Mass media is a, is a medium of communication which is used to reach information to a large number of people at the same time. What are the examples? This includes television is a part, radio, newspapers, magazines, and the internet. Our cultural activities can be projected and promoted through this means to a large audience across the world. So that's one means, the use of mass media, that's one. Next one is um, preservation of artifacts and monuments. What are artifacts? Artifacts are traditional artworks of historical importance. Why monument refers to structures, e.g. like building, sites, statues, constructed to honor an event or a person. What are the examples of Nigerian artifacts? They are the Iboku artworks, terracotta, knock culture. The na now, when we talk about the monument, we have National Theater, National Arts Theater in Lagos. How many of you have been to that place? It's a monument. The National Stadium is also another one. The National Assembly, Abuja, and many others are examples of monuments that represent our cultural heritage, which we need to preserve for future generations coming. These are artifacts that I was talking about. And even the white people do come to purchase all our artifacts to their country. So if they can cherish it, we should cherish it more. Now, this is National Art Theatre Lagos. It's a monument. This is a National Assembly here. It's a monument to show the future generation coming, the National Stadium, another one. The started here, uh, I think we have this one in Lagos. So it's another monument that the coming generation will see and cherish our culture and values. And last one is organizing um, school programs. Our indigenous culture can be promoted by organizing cultural debates, cultural parades, cultural festival in schools, like in some schools, they still organize the cultural festival, the cultural festival they wear, we have different um, pupils dressing and represent the ethnic group they come from. It's another way to promote and uh, announce our culture. Uh, you can see the school children here, this is a cultural festival in schools. We have come to the end of today's lesson, but before we go, I have a few questions to test you on what we have talked about today. Question number one. Mention four areas in which foreign culture has affected Nigerian culture. Four areas. Two, state two advantages of foreign culture. Your time starts now. Eyes on me. Uncle Popo is here. I believe you are still there. Now the answers. Four areas in which foreign culture has affected Nigerian culture. One, religion, education, political system, music, earth, and some of the ones we have discussed in today's lesson. Say to advantages of foreign culture. Good FKS system and practice, well-structured educational system. Mark it accordingly and score yourself. We have come to the end of today's lesson. 
Until next time, next lesson, Uncle Popo says, keep on studying. Bye. Dear pupils, we've come to the end of another wonderful edition of your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home. Wonderful indeed it has been. We hope that you have enjoyed yourself because we have had fun learning with you today. Now, the link for our online assessment is bit.ly forward slash last verb lesson 59. Link again is bit.ly forward slash last verb lesson 59. We want to hold you to take the online assessment. There you will find a lot of challenging practice questions that will help you to improve your skills in all that we have taught you. Now for the video challenge of the week. We received a lot of videos concerning those that mimicked on Kukoko's uh, introduction and we're going to be showing you our video of the week in our next lesson. But for this week, our challenge is for you, of course, since you have mimicked Auntie Fumi and you have mimicked Uncle Popo, I mean, it's only fair if you mimic Uncle Lagbaji as well. Yes, so we'll be looking forward most... to you sending videos of you portraying Uncle Lagbaji the way he does in his lessons. I will evaluate and check whether you fit to be on the program, Auntie Fumi. Yeah. Taking your online assessment is based on if you have access to either your daddy's, your mommy's, your uncle's or your auntie's Android or smartphones. If not, there's no problem. Just send your questions, your comments, and your homework to 081-50-865663. Please do not call that number. Just send SMS or WhatsApp messages only. And when you are sending your homework, please make sure you indicate your name. What again? Class. And? L-G-E-A. And the school. This is the only way we can identify you to be able to appraise you accordingly. Today's lessons were amazing, just like the previous ones. These lessons are on Lagos Suburb YouTube channel for you to watch at your own preferred time or in case you missed any of the classes. Subscribe to Lagos Suburb YouTube channel to get notification when new videos are uploaded. The classroom in your home could be watched live on Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. the same time airing on television through the page showing you on the screen. Till our next lesson where we shall meet again on another beautiful edition of The Classroom in Your Home. Please do your homework. Wash your hands regularly. Stay at home and stay, stay safe. safe. La Subeb, leave, leave no child behind. behind. Dear pupils, parents and guardians, let me start by thanking you for being a part of all our remote learning platforms, particularly our television program, The Classroom in Your Home. Each feedback has been awesome. Good job, you. Our teachers have been working assiduously to break the learning laws during this critical period. Therefore, I am pleased to inform you that the classroom in your home has been extended to accommodate the lower primary classes and a dedicated lesson to cater for our special needs pupils in line with our mandate of providing an all-inclusive and quality basic education in our dear state. This program is fully sponsored by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBE, and supported by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board under the COVID-19 Blended Learning Intervention Initiative. Please encourage your wards to tune in and take every advantage of this laudable program. Also remember, this pandemic is not over. Let us continue to abide by all health and safety guidelines as stipulated by the government. At last we we are determined to leave no child behind in our quest to improve the standard of basic education in our state. Thank you.